Medium machine guns are in a rather odd place currently in Battlefield 5. Due to the lack of ability to aim down the sights while moving, many players will skip over these weapons in favor of more agile and user-friendly options. Despite this, a small portion of the player base has adapted to the handicaps of the MMGs and learned how to dominate with them. What's going on guys and gals, my name is Shadox, and today on the Armory we were taking a look at our first medium machine gun, the MG-34. We will go over the weapon's strengths, weaknesses, and give you some guidance on how best to utilize this weapon. Unlocked at support rank 1, the MG-34 features a maximum damage of 25.1 per bullet, a base rate of fire of 670 rounds per minute, a muzzle velocity of 740 meters per second, and starts out with a 50 round belt. The obvious downside to this weapon is a restriction on the weapon's ADS ability. In order to use the sights, you must have the bipod deployed and in use. This puts the firearm in a tricky spot at the moment, as bipods currently have many issues plaguing their usability. This will be remedied soon, but as of making this video, there were many frustrating times where the bipod just would not latch onto the surface. But just because you cannot aim with the weapon while moving does not mean that it is completely useless outside of being prone. You can fire from the hip or pull the weapon closer in and fire to maximize your hip chance. Don't expect to land shots past arm's length, but this can save your skin in a pinch. Where this weapon shines is when prone and bipodded, as the weapon's spread and recoil becomes much better and reliable. The MG34 specializations can be used to adjust the handling characteristics to suit many different environments. Let's take a look at these specializations now. Recoil buffer for decreased vertical recoil. High velocity bolts to increase the muzzle velocity to 840 meters per second. Flashless propellant to reduce muzzle flash. Chrome lining to delay barrel overheating. Extended belt to give yourself a 100 round belt. Double drum magazine to increase the ammo capacity to 75 rounds. Light bolt to increase the rate of fire to 770 rounds per minute. And ported barrel to decrease horizontal recoil. We can take a look at the recoil of the weapon for some interesting observations. First, when the port of barrel option is not selected and the rate of fire increase is instead chosen, the overall left-right tendency of the recoil is random. The same is technically true with port of barrel, but the horizontal recoil is suppressed so much with it that we can ignore it. What this means is that you will need to react to each burst in a different manner than the last. But, due to the low recoil nature of the bipods, this should be easy to accomplish, even for the greenest of players. The decision to go down either the left or the right path for the middle two specializations is an interesting choice. The left path gives you the reduced muzzle flash and the 100 round belt, whereas the right path gives slower overheat times and a 75 round drum for slightly quicker reloads. So which one is better? I had a friend help me record the muzzle flash difference due to the flashless propellant, and while it's not completely invisible with the specialization chosen, it does reduce the intensity significantly. It's perfect for someone who is forced to be prone half of the time. The 100 round belt is a nice upgrade as well, allowing you to engage more enemies before needing to reload. The right path does have some benefits as well. The chrome lining will keep your rate of fire high for longer and can come in handy if you run into an entire team. The dual drums on the other hand give you less ammo overall, but saves one second on empty reloads from six seconds to five seconds on an empty and saves half a second on tactical reloads from four seconds to three and a half. So after all of that, which specializations would I recommend? My personal setup was the following. Recoil buffer, flashless propellant, extended belt, and light bolt. Since the MG34 already has an extremely high muzzle velocity, choosing to increase it only gives us small returns, and really only becomes impactful past about 200 meters. Decreasing the vertical recoil will allow for easier shot placement on moving targets at a distance, and so, that is what I chose. The second choice is a bit more difficult, but choosing flashless propellant and extended belt gives two major advantages. First, the decreased muzzle flash will help conceal you since you will be extremely vulnerable to snipers and DMRs when prone and bipodded. The extended belt grants you an additional 25 rounds over the dual drums, which has saved my skin more than once. If you burst properly and don't just mag dump, you should rarely find yourself overheating. And the reload animations are so long with the MMGs that saving one second isn't going to change your fate if you get rushed during a reload. The final option, Light Bolt, is a no-brainer. Increasing your rate of fire will allow you to compete with most weapons despite your obvious disadvantage of being stationary. 
The increased rate of fire will also aid your close quarter hip fire ability, keeping you alive. Controlling the recoil is easy, but not entirely predictable. Besides the obvious pulling down to compensate for vertical recoil, you will need to adjust your compensation on the fly to match whatever direction the muzzle is traveling. Taking a look at the TTK chart for the MG34, we can see that this weapon holds a respectable time to kill at all ranges. Up close it can compete with the assault rifles and SMGs and is comparable to the DMRs at longer ranges. The blue line represents the base TTK with 670 rounds per minute rate of fire and the red line is with the rate of fire upgrade. There are technically four different TTK lines for this weapon, as choosing the high velocity bullets will have a slight change, but I have not included these as the difference inside 100 meters is insignificant. At 100 meters, the reduction in TTK is only 16 milliseconds. There will be some changes coming to the MMG's recoil mechanic soon, and the recoil will be increased slightly, but these changes should be fairly minimal when looking at the numbers, and this setup should continue to be the optimal path for this weapon moving forward. As far as tactics go, you will need to fight dirty with the MG34. You will always be at a major disadvantage by needing to have the bipod deployed to use the weapon effectively. This means that you will need to take advantage of concealment, cover, and defilade to win your engagements reliably. Use anything in your environment to give you the advantage, whether that be laying on rooftops, in bushes, or between some rocks. I have never gone prone this much before using the weapon, but this is the best way to ensure your survival. If you can set up properly, exposing as little of your body as possible, and overlook common traffic lanes, you can rack up some insane kill streaks and stop an entire team's push in its tracks. But be warned, once they see you as their primary threat, expect every gun in the area to start firing at you. My name is Shadox, and I hope to see you on the battlefield. Thank you.